Hey, welcome to a quick little video on the with statement. I know the with statement is a little bit confused, especially for beginners. I know I was a little bit confused by it at first. Let's talk a little bit about it. What actually does the with statement look like? Something like that. And then it accepts a few different potential arguments. For example, in our bunny game here, we have our main character, the bunny guy. And then we have all of these little floating bugs, which in the code I'm referring to as the enemy object. Let's say we have an item where if we hit the space bar, it'll actually destroy all of these little bugs around us. How would we go about that? We can pass in an object name here just like that. So as I said before, we have this enemy object. We pass that into the with statement. And then within this block, it's like we're opening up access to the enemy object to run code within the enemy object. So it's going to actually loop through all of the enemies that exist in the room and run whatever code we put within this block. So for example, If we run instance destroy, it's going to loop through every single enemy and destroy each instance of that enemy. Like that. Now let's look at this another way, just to make it clear what's going on. We have this function called instance number, which also takes in an object. If we hover over it here, you'll see you can find out how many active instances of the specified object exist in the room. So this will give us however many enemies we have. And then we could run a loop. Against however many enemies we have. Keep track of what index we're currently on. And get each instance. Something like instance find enemy and then the current index of the loop. So it's going to come through the loop. It's going to grab the zeroth enemy. Then it's going to come through again, grab the first, grab the second, grab the third, etc. At the end of the loop, make sure to increment our index so that it counts back up. And then we could do something with these instances, right? So we could call instance destroy on them, for example. So let's run our code again, see what happens. And they're gone, so they're still gone. So these two things here, these two different blocks of code are doing the exact same thing. So this is kind of an alias or a shorthand for finding all of the instances, looping over them, and then running some piece of code against every instance. So let's look at another example here. So what if we want to modify just a single instance? So let's run our game again here. We've got our bunny. Let's say we want to do something to just this single one enemy we have up here. So one thing we could do is say we could find an instance again, right? So let's find the instance that is nearest or closest to our bunny object. So I'm running this code within the step function of the main player bunny object. And I'm gonna try to find the enemy that's currently closest to it. Then I can manipulate that instance. So let's say we wanna change the X scale of the sprite or something, just so you can see what's closest. So when we load up, what's currently closest to the bunny is that enemy right here. As I start to approach, other objects, you'll see it'll begin to apply that same set of code. It's going to manipulate the image x scale 
of whatever is currently closest. Now another thing that I could do instead of running the code like that instance.imageXscale I can also pass a single instance into WIS. Then within here, again, it's like we're opening up a window into the enemy code and running code directly from the enemy. So we, for example, here could just say x scale equals 50. Code looks like that. Run our game again. And doing the same thing, right? Now, why would we pass a single instance into width? One reason is because the scope changes. We can run a big block of code within the context of some other object. So it's a way to communicate with another object, run code against that object, and not have to reference it constantly like this. So you could imagine as your code gets more complicated, this may become less readable versus not having to constantly need to reference back to instance. In older versions of GameMaker, there were actually build problems with this syntax as well. I don't think that is the case anymore, um, but in general, GameMaker does still recommend this as best practice to use the with statement. So let's look at another example. So we saw the with statement with objects and with object instances. But it works with structs as well. So I made this sample struct here. It's called test. It's got a name and it's got a method called set name, which takes in a new name and reassigns the name. So again, we do have the ability to go in and say test set name. And then if we print out that name, we'll see over here that it changed. Now, similar to our example before, we can also pass in that struct into the with statement. So then we have access to run code within context of struct. So we no longer need to reference test.struct because it's already within the context of the struct. So also, this is the same as running, for example, self.setName, because self is now referencing test. So it's just like we're running the code from inside here. Do the same thing. With test set name, run the code. And see over there, still works. One final little trick with the with statement is there is a special keyword called all, which gives you access to every single instance. So again, remember when we're passing in general objects or collections like all, this acts like a loop. So the code here is gonna run against every single instance. So let's just do a little example here in the step event where we increment X by one. So it should slowly move over every single object in the game. The way I'm drawing shadows on those enemies, they get stuck on creation, which is why they're not moving. Now, another keyword that we've access to in here is other. Other means a reference to the object outside of this with statement. So it's referencing the object here. 
So here we're running this code within the step event of the bunny. So other is going to reference the current instance of that bunny. So for example, another thing we could do is let's assign all objects as x value to the x value of other, which is the x value of bunny. So it should align them all horizontally right towards the middle of the screen there. Now let's do the same thing with y. It's basically going to shove them all together in the center of the screen. Now why is this helpful? So more realistic use cases of other would be something along the lines of your player object inflicts some sort of damage on an enemy. So I'm just going to write a bit of pseudocode here where we have an enemy. Say we're grabbing an enemy that we're colliding with. We might want to run some code against that enemy. Something like health minus equals some value that the enemy health is going to decrease by. Now, maybe the bunny has an attack value associated with it, which changes. Maybe he's holding a different weapon, or maybe his stats get bumped over the course of gameplay. So we might need to actually pull that information directly from other, which is the bunny, which is colliding with enemy. So it's a bit more of a realistic use case of using other. That's it. Thanks for watching. This is a very new YouTube channel. I'm still getting used to making YouTube videos. I'm very early on in the process, so I appreciate it. Please let me know if you have any feedback. Write it in the comments. Reach out to me. It'd be very helpful. Subscribe for more game dev videos, game maker videos. Bye-bye.